So this weekend I was uh, down in Nashville and I met with uh, an EO member named Clint who owns a, a company called Emma Email Marketing. He's built a great company. He's got uh, 100 employees, 105 employees, uh, almost $20 million in revenue, run rate. Uh, and so, and he's built a, an awesome company on kind of the same infrastructure as we have with the different meetings and uh, uh, huddles and, open, and somewhat open book management and, and just the, the focus on uh, transparency and, and rocks and priorities and goals and all those things. Uh, he told me a story of one of his friends who, uh, so he was, he was working for uh, this, this small little company called Nike. Uh, and that's the Nike symbol. And so he was, you know, Nike's a big enough company that divisions are bigger than most companies. And so this guy was going to interview for uh, this job. So this is the guy that he was interviewing with. And so he comes in and, and talks with them and says, uh, he's got really big feet. And so he's, he's coming and say, you know, what is the purpose of this job? What's the, you know, what is this job going to entail? What is it all about? And it was the division that this guy was in charge of was, you know, Nike's a really big effort on sustainability. So this whole department was built on uh, how to recycle uh, old shoes. And so he's coming in, he's asking, okay, what's the, the role? What's the job description? What are, you know, what would be expected of me and all these things? And so, this guy, the, the manager, uh, I guess he was kind of the CEO of, of this division, looks at him, bends over, opens up his drawer, and puts a shoe on the table, that's a shoe, uh, and says six words. Figure out how to recycle these. That's the purpose of this role. That's what your job is about. How can you find a way to recycle these shoes? You know, there's nothing about uh, tasks or reports or who to report to or all that. The purpose of this job, figure out how to recycle these. And it told me that story and I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And the reason why it's cool is because it really cuts through all the BS and all the stuff and gets to what is the really the, the really the core purpose. It reminded me of you know we talked uh, a while back about uh, you know if if your life is kind of like a a tower that there's you know different levels of perspective. And so what it kind of reminded me of from this perspective is that it's you know there's kind of five windows that you can get to. You know, one, the first floor being the task, and so this is where you're looking out from the ground and you're seeing the rocks and the, you know, all the things that are on the ground. Uh, then you can look at it from perspective of what does it mean to your team, uh, to your department, to your company, and then the fifth one really kind of being what's the purpose. You know, and so you've got five different floors that you can take a look at and look at this same job description in five, different, in five different ways. And so when you start looking at it from this perspective, a lot of times we fall into the trap of just looking at the task. And so what we end up doing is we have this task that we're doing and we try to find meaning or purpose in that task. And it's really hard because when you're grinding through your checklist, it's really hard to see the bigger picture and see what it's all about. And so what I want to challenge us all to do is say, instead of trying to find purpose and tasks, let's, let's instead try to find tasks and purpose. You know, so if this is kind of like the bat call, the bat signal, instead of it being sent up from a task, start from the top and look down and see where that spotlight goes onto the ground and then that's, those are the tasks that you should be filling your your day to day role with. So in this instance, figure out how to recycle these. Okay, so now he's got his purpose, he's got what he needs to be focusing on. So what are the tasks that he needs to do in order to recycle these? Instead of looking at the other way, 
well, here's, here are the meetings you're expected to go to. Here are the things that you're supposed to do each day. And then have to challenge himself to try to, excuse me, try to find meaning and purpose in that. Because, you know, with purpose, there's, there's kind of a, a component that there's, uh, it's kind of the intersection of, of two things. Uh, you know, kind of personal and professional. And now, so for us, you know, we've got our go statements. You know, and so this is really supposed to be your personal mission statement. This is supposed to be, you know, are you in alignment with your, your purpose, what you're about? And this is why I challenge a lot of you guys when you're developing your go statements, is this something that you can measure against? Is this something that you can say, this is what I'm about, and if not, I'm not going to be uh, as fulfilled. You know, from the, the company side, it's, it's kind of a, some combination of, of mission, vision, and, you know, and brand promise is, is kind of the, the purpose there. And so what you want to try to find is this intersection right here that you can have purpose, that you understand where the, your purpose is in, in alignment with the purpose of your company, and therefore find purpose in your tasks. That's when you're going to find your work fulfilling. That's when you're going to do inspired work, and that's when you're going to continually be able to combat the grind that, that happens when you're stuck on the first floor, when you're stuck at just looking at that task list and just checking off another box, another box, another box. And then, you know, because those, those searches for purpose oftentimes come when you're most disheveled and when you're most stressed, and when you're most trying to say, what is the point of all this? And so when you're, you're stuck down here, it's almost impossible to, to raise up and see what, what it's all about. So we've talked about this once before, and what this allows you to do is, is when you can find this intersection here and focus your task on this, you know, when we talked about it before, that a strong enough why will overcome any what. And that's what this will allow you to do, is to really focus in on the why of your what. And when you can do that, that's when you're going to do inspired work, and that's when you're going to enjoy what you do. It doesn't mean that it's going to be uh, extraordinarily fun every day, but that means that you're going to have an opportunity to really see purpose in your work and, and see yourself grow and, and under, understand that overcoming those adversities are going to make you a better person. So Clint now often uses this story uh, within his company, because this really translates across lots of different things. So what, what oftentimes he'll say is like if he's in a meeting and you know and maybe the perspective is is a little bit too low when they're working on either a project or they're working on client work, is he'll say, What's the tennis shoe moment? You know, what is this really about? What's the real purpose of what we're doing? Uh, and I just thought that was pretty powerful of, of it just an uh, easy story and easy uh, three words, you know, tennis shoe moment of, hey, let's not forget what we're here to do. Let's not, let's not get stuck, you know, in looking at the task or looking how it relates to, you know, if it's a website, the dev team or the, the department of the whole, uh, you know, operations standpoint of how we help work with our, our clients or even get stuck on uh, just generating profit for the company. But really, what is this about? What is the purpose of what we're doing? And when you can find that purpose, then the tasks are going to show up and be much more in line. You're going to waste a lot less effort because these are all going to be things that drive the ultimate purpose of what you're about.